negative, this is talking about the negative Q binomial coefficient. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to see that Doron followed his own rules and came back to the talk. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that Doron, although he is a very opinionated, is also a very generous and kind person. And I really appreciate that, Doron. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about two things that Doron has spent quite a bit of time on. Identities and inequality. So the first part of the talk, I'm going to talk about an identity that comes from the moments of the ASCII-Wilson polynomial and then explain how those moments are related to something in statistical physics called the asymmetrical exclusion process, a certain Markov chain. And then I'm going to talk about some inequalities, namely about the negative Q binomial coefficient and some kind of Q analog of the Q analog, which may indicate not the existence of a field with a negative number of elements, but maybe some sort of algebra that should go along with it. So I know it's strange to think of algebra of something that doesn't even exist, but this is how people think of fields with one element. So this would be like negative elements. I'm not going to say anything about asymptotics. <laughs> okay, let's start with something very simple. They mean Taylor series for polynomials. We know how all this works. You expand a polynomial, then you can find the coefficients of certain terms of certain nth derivative. That's Taylor series. Well, what happens if you take the nth power and replace it by some other set of polynomials? Well, for example, I've taken that exact product polynomial. Then there is a Q Taylor series. You can find those coefficients when you do the expansion. This is having the derivative operator got some kind of Q derivative operator instead. What's the Q derivative operator? It's the ASCII-Wilson operator. It's this operator that is related to orthogonal polynomials. And here it is, it has a kind of a funny definition. You think of x as cosine theta, and you take this divided difference in terms of e to the i theta. You can see that it does act like a derivative. It reduces degrees of polynomials by 1. You can explicitly find it on these Chebyshev polynomials. So it's some kind of a derivative type of thing. The Chebyshev. What? The Chebyshev. T, t is not. Which, why do you call that t? T. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> well, if you needed to use that formula, you'd have to know how to find the nth derivative of something. Well, since it's a difference of two things, there should be an analog of the nth power of the difference operator. And yes, there is such a formula. I'd have figured out. This is due to Sean Cooper. So there's some kind of exact formula here. The exact details just not worry about what it is. But we can write down all in terms of these f checks at these dilations of z. Let's forget about that. It's late in the day. <laughs> so if you put those two things together, namely the Q-Taylor series and that Cooper formula, you always have this expansion every single time. This polynomial is equal to some kind of sum times the value of this polynomial at z evaluated at this place. It's always true. And for those of you who know things about special functions, that's a very well-poised series. It immediately shows up. That's automatic for this. So let's take the most trivial example. Just take uh, x to the n and expand it. Well, if you do that, you get this identity. So we get a sum that has a very well-poised part. They have a very strange nth power of something. So this would be like a hypergeometric series of phi sub 2n plus 6. The number of parameters is going to depend upon n because there's an nth power here. So it's a phi 2n plus 6, and it's a valuable. We call it identity sub 1. So presumably, Doron, 
This is something you can do, right? You don't have to have a finite number of, you can do it with the general N. Okay, Darwin says he can. And uh, anyway, I can do this simply just in about one line anyway. So. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, I want to show where that formula comes from, why anyone would care about it. It's one thing just to have an identity that's to prove it, but why should I care about this crazy formula I just made up? It's all related to the ascii wilson polynomials, which are certain four feet threes. They have orthogonality with respect to a certain measure that I've written down here in terms of some infinite products. There are four parameters, A, B, C, and D. And they're polynomials in X, which is cosine theta. Exact formula, so you don't need to worry about. What we're going to be interested in is the nth moment of this measure. So you just integrate X to the n times this measure. What do you get? You're going to get some function of A, B, C, and Q. It's going to be a function of n also. Oh, let's not look at that. Too late today. <laughs> so here's the theorem. This nth moment has this exact double sum formula. You can write down exactly what it is. It might look a little complicated, but it's not that bad. This key nth power is the interesting part. You have a power of q plus 1 over power of q all raised to the nth power. I should tell you, if you were to expand that out, you're going to get some kind of mixed formula with binomial and q-binomial coefficients. It's going to show up. In particular, if we specialize d equal to 1 over c, we know exactly what this moment is. It's a very simple formula. When you put that into this, you actually get that identity number one. So the identity number one is just figuring out what the moments of these ascii wilson polynomials are in this special case when d equals 1 over c. That's all that was. What are the moments for other values? Well, this is going to be some symmetric function in a, b, c, and d. What is it? This previous formula that I have right here has a B, C, and D symmetric, but the A's are all over the place in some non-symmetric way. And the denominators are everywhere. So how do you figure that out? We don't know the answer in general, what it is. But it is known in some particular cases. For example, if two of the parameters are zero, here is a triple sum formula which has products of q-binomials times differences of binomials. This was found by a student of uh, Sylvie Cortiel, Joshua Tiberis, just last year. He did not use this formula I showed you. He used, instead of combinatorial interpretation, these moments from Lotzkin Paths. And he got to use a theorem of Doron. There was no, I read the paper by Joseph there was no relation to moments. This paper. To who? The, 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 the first one you mentioned, Julia yeah. Verde. Yes. You were yes. not aware of this. Of what? Of, of the phone, of your phone. Oh, no, he didn't know about no, that. No. no, I told him about that later. <coughs> and so down at the second part of this page, I worked out what the symmetric function is when d equals zero. It's a quadruple sum. And it's maybe not quite obvious, but it's true that this is a polynomial in ABC that's symmetrical. So it's writing it out in terms of the monomial symmetric functions. Okay, this is a challenge for Dora, for any of his <laughs> faithful and obedient servants. <laughs> I don't know what this general formula is. I'd like to see it um, in the symmetric form. The general formula I had before, right here, this page, oops. that's a double sum. I think to get the symmetric form, you're going to have to have more sums. You're going to have to go backwards and actually have more sums. Okay, so that's one explanation where this identity came from. But these moments themselves are interesting for, interesting for another reason. Maybe the asymmetrical exclusion process. This is 